Remember yesterday we read the napping house? Can anybody tell me what was going on in the napping house? I know. Arshia? The kindergartners in my class really enjoyed reading The Napping House, and it's a good start to growing patterns because it's very visual. The students can see as the book goes on, they add one character on each page. Okay, the granny. Granny, and then the child. Mm -hmm. And then the... the dog. Oh, is the dog next to the granny and the child? It's on top. On top. Very good. Oh, that's kind of tall. It's getting tall. Very good. Thank you, Brandon. It's like a stairs. Yeah, what does it start looking like? What'd you say, Brandon? It looks like a stairs. It looks like stairs. Very good. Anybody else notice anything that's happening here? Arlo? It's adding up. First there's one, then there's two, then there's three. Oh, so how many are we adding? Um, one more to each. One more to each. Very good. I'm glad that you noticed that. So we have here, we saw that it looks like stairs and we were adding one more. Okay. So what do you think is going to happen the next time? Arshia? The cat is going to come up. Right. But with our graph, what do you think is going to happen next? Arlo was saying that we were adding more each time. It's going to get higher. Higher. Higher, higher. Okay. Now there's going to be four. There's going to be four. How do you know that? Because after three comes four. After three comes four. Okay. The granny, the child, the dog, and the cat. Now, scoot back just a little bit, Eli, so you can look at it. It does kind of look like stairs. You're right. So here's what you just say to go up these stairs. And then you go down these. Here, I'll show you what. That is kind of like stairs. You're right. I think it's really important to work with preschoolers with more complex patterns than the simple A, B, or color patterns, or the ones that kids normally pick up in preschool to extend it more and to do things like growing patterns or seeing patterns in their world. Looks like the stairs of May of what's inside the picture. If we had it in a long line and put those on top, mm -hmm. that would be like a pattern, kind of. Why was it a pattern, kind of? Because it oh. has the same things. Yeah, they do repeat the same characters in the story, but each time we do something, watch how I'm going to do I'm going to do this last row. So I add the granny and the child. There's six here. Mm-hmm. And there's five here. Mm-hmm. And there's four, there's two, and there's one. Right, but I'm adding another Three. one. Three. Mm-hmm. There's two. And then what goes on at the very top, Ilya? Can you put the flea where it goes? Or, okay. Okay, I'd like you to turn to your partner now with your knees and your eyes looking towards your partner. And I want you to tell your partner one thing you notice about our graph. Okay? Turn and talk is a great strategy if you have English language learners in your classroom because they're able to listen to their peers use the appropriate language, then they feel much more comfortable to talk with their partners as well and then answer in the classroom to the teacher. Okay, it looks like most of you are done talking with your partner. You can turn back around. Okay, raise your hand if you have something you'd like to share about our pictograph right here. Linnea? Well, you know how we were stacking them up? Mm-hmm. Well, actually, we were stacking them up, but all the same cards are actually just in a big line. Okay, down at the bottom, you're talking about this way, how they're the same cards down here because we started with the granny and then we went with the child, okay? See that you noticed that? Very good. Cameron? And it goes through one, two, three, four, and five, and six. Okay, so it goes one, two, three, four, five, and six. six. Okay. How many would we have over there? Seven. Seven. We could make seven, so we're adding one more. I want you to try to make 
a growing pattern just like this one. Using the Unifix cubes was very helpful to have the students generalize the pattern that they just learned. With the picture cards, they're able to see the characters in the book, but using the Unifix cubes, they're able to generalize that pattern. Two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and oh. seven. Oh, is this seven? Let's count and see. Can you count with me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. I add nine because I wanted to change the number. You wanted to change the number, but over here we had one, and then it grew by one, right? You were adding one. So what should we make this last one to follow the pattern? Seven. Okay. This is just the beginning of growing patterns for my students. The number patterns we use in our classroom, like skip counting by twos and fives and tens, are a way that students can use the growing pattern in another way. They are able to make the connection from growing one. They can go ahead and do it by twos and fives and tens now.